Hi there, this is a quick video to show you how to use Passband History. Uh, it's a small application that I've written which uh, sits alongside WSJTX or in this case JTDX and receives information sent from those applications over UDP in the reporting section here. It uses uh, signal information and it displays it in this passband over the space of uh, well it keeps five minutes worth and you can use this up and down uh, arrow here or the mouse wheel uh, to s display more or uh, fewer uh, signals so it shows that showing now uh, two minutes worth of historic signals these orange blocks are the signals of course uh, this is running FT4 uh, at the moment and wherever there's activity will be shown by these orange uh, boxes the brighter the orange the stronger the signal and the software attempts to find an area which it, it thinks is the best place to transmit uh, so we all, we've all sat there, looked at this waterfall and wondered where we could uh, <laughs> uh, successfully transmit. Well this passband history attempts to uh, to help you uh, come up with an answer. As you can see it's moving around at the moment because there's uh, extra signals coming in. If we increase the duration of history, so go up to a maximum of 5 minutes, that's now displaying f all the signals that have arrived here over the space of 5 minutes and it's worked out the best place to go between these two green markers is essentially there if the green marker is moved it will pick a different spot and you can weight it as well on this red uh, red marker so if you want to be there somewhere and you create your area uh, there if you drag this further over it will find a better spot it's discounting this one because this black area is only a s small percentage of the transmit bandwidth and either side of that are some fairly strong signals so it's ignored that one and um, you can basically use it like that so if we switch over to uh, FT8 uh, yeah FT8 so we go to FT8 here so it's cleared the war cleared the uh, history move frequency and now we're waiting for some more signals to come in the next cycle you will uh, notice uh, it's decided there on that cycle if uh, something else to mention if you've got a different display width so I want to shrink this down so 3000 is ending there now I've increased the uh, the bins per pixel so you'd have something like that you can use uh, this edge to set your scale so if you line the edge of that and the edge of that and hit 3 kilohertz scale it will always make 3 kilohertz on the edge of the window and it saves all this information of course when you when you shut down so if I was to close this down now and uh, bring it back up it comes back in the same place uh, this information here locator and dial frequency WSJTX uh, provides this information uh, intermittently so that uh, gets filled in if you move frequency on the VFO uh, for instance you can see that it it moves around up there be careful with that though because there is some lag f time uh, for that to happen it's about a second I think or can be up to a second and if you move frequency and this decodes them on that new frequency this uh, passband history won't be notified of the frequency change so uh, things can get in a mess so I tend to leave that alone uh, it's ignored uh, when it's in transmit so uh, it doesn't cause any problems there um, you can clear the uh, clear the history of course see how it's picking a different uh, different area there 
if we weight it slightly differently so if we want to be as close as po the best possible place as close to two kilohertz as we can in that area that's where it's decided and you just click you just right click as normal to set your transmit frequency and you just kind of line it up with that uh, with that yellow if we uh, increase this bins per pi uh, reduce the bins per pixel so we get a wider display set this to 3000 hit scale uh, it's decided there which is right on the edge so we can right click here and uh, we end up uh, lining up with that of course if we were to I normally run at about 2500 to 500 and uh, if you want to work in different areas you can just drag that around there's another option here edges um, which will automatically use the f widest signals available to set your uh, search area I don't tend to use that very often and ignore my call if you if it picks an area and you start transmitting there of course there's a chance that somebody's going to come back to you on that frequency and make that area not suitable well make it so that uh, passband history thinks that that's not suitable and it'll jump off again so have that ticked on to ignore anybody that comes back to you close to that uh, to that frequency there it thinks this is a better place to be now so we could uh, do some transmissions there uh, it handles different modes JT65 doesn't do the mix does JT9 doesn't do T10 it actually does whisper but it's a bit pointless um, so that's it let's just go back to FT4 uh, what else can I say um, you can click on this of course to clear everything uh, like so there are some settings in here which allow you to define the um, IP and port to use for the UDP client and this ties up with the details saved here now if you've got a setup where WSJTX is talking to an external logging software or JT alert or some such then you may have to fiddle or create a chain essentially and use other bits of software to uh, to feed that information on um, the last option is a signal chart which shows over time a signal to noise ratio a minimum maximum and average your distance in kilometers for the station so max distance here was up to about 12k uh, 12,000 miles away well, we got Philippines coming in there and these are the number of signals per uh, minute of course we flip to uh, JT uh, FT8 there which there was a lot more activity and this happens every minute you can have this window show on startup like so just tick this option off and on everything is remembered so if you position this here for instance and then shut uh, shut this down bring this back up it will resume back in that position uh, you can hide uh, different graphs on there and you can view a number of hours up to 48 hours worth of data this software at the moment does not store this so as you can see when I stopped and started the program it lost it all so if you want to uh, generate some historic plots then you uh, need to leave it running and monitoring a, uh, a given mode and band uh, so there we are that's uh, that's pretty much it um, you've got a little display up here which shows that we're looking at 300 seconds worth these move in jumps of 15 if you use the arrows and I quite sure what it does on the wheel but it's not in steps of 15 it's something else um, 
it shows you the minim neg uh, the minimum SNR and the uh, highest signal to noise ratio and the average uh, just by there and uh, that's pretty much it I, I found it quite handy to be honest and it's quite interesting looking at the um, looking at how the signals change over time certainly interesting to see the bands die off come back to life uh, so there we are um, any questions or whatever just uh, drop them down below the video or uh, visit the link in the uh, in the video description there for some more information uh, something else I should mention if you position these windows somewhere and you lose them um, say for instance you know you'd positioned it down there whatever and you you'd lost them and you'd shut the software down well they're gonna come back they're lost but what you can do is hold the shift key down as you start the program up and it will reposition everything back to a default uh, position so you don't really ever lose anything uh, you can display curve lines, step lines there, and I think that's uh, pretty much it. Yeah, cheers then.